Today on The Crunch, why so many people are struggling to buy a home and what can be done about it. I'm joined by Guardian Australia's economic columnist Greg Jericho, who is also the policy director at the Centre for Future Work at the Australia Institute. Welcome to The Crunch, Greg. G'day, Nick. As usual, we're going to start with the chart. Here, we're going to have property prices played by violin with average wages on piano. To compare the two, I've indexed both to 100 in the starting year. The lowest value you'll hear is 100, and the highest you'll hear is 606. Each note is a year, and the chart goes from 1991 to 2022. So that's a pretty dramatic increase there, Greg. Can you tell me what's going on? Before sort of around the start of the 2000s, so around the start of this century, wages and household incomes used to kind of go up in sync. That all kind of stopped around the start of this century. And it really shows that the ability to buy a home has just gone out of reach of of most people because their wages, their income haven't kept up with the increase in house prices. So what's actually driving these increases? A lot of things are driving them, unfortunately. A big one is taxation. Uh, We know around 2000, when these lines started splitting apart, there was a big change in capital gains tax. And what that meant was when you combined it with negative gearing, you had accountants absolutely salivating because people were able to buy homes, they were able to rent them out, they were getting a tax break for renting them out. And when they were selling them and selling them at a profit, you were also getting a tax discount. So when you combine those two things, it was just fantastic. And it meant that people were suddenly buying homes, almost kind of speculating that the the value would go up and know that they were going to get a tax break if that happened. We also seen real changes over the past 20 years with supply, a a real sort of difficulty of housing, keeping up with population growth. And it's meant that uh, there really hasn't been as as much uh, housing out there for people to to buy and certainly not in areas that are convenient for people. That brings us to our next chart. This one shows us the number of dwellings per 1,000 people and it compares 2,000 to 2020. And I guess what we can see here is that Australia has not really increased much at all in those years, while other countries like France or Portugal or Germany or Japan, all those other countries have managed to actually increase their supply per head of population. This is really key because when you think about it, all that means is we've had fairly strong population growth, but we really haven't had the housing that has been able to keep pace with that as well. And there's a number of factors going on here. It's not just or number of dwellings, it's the type of dwellings as well. If if we're just having a lot of houses being built, you know, you need new land to be opened up and that land is getting opened up further and further away from the CBD, which is means that housing that is close to the CBD is increasing in value more and more. And so that's causing house prices to to skyrocket. And so It really is something that highlights the fact that you've got to not just worry about the demand side, we have to worry about the supply side. And aside from increasing supply, how how do we fix this? How do we bring prices down soon? Well, even on the supply side issue, we shouldn't just be leaving it up to the market. In effect, the market has put us where we are at the moment. The government should be getting involved. If we think back to the 60s and 70s and you You think about Anthony Albanese always talking about how he grew up in public housing. Well, back then, public housing accounted for about 10% of the new build of homes. Now it's it's lucky to be 2%. So we really should be ramping up the amount of public housing we get because that really helps the lower end of uh, the market. It means that you're not having people who, you know, probably aren't going to be able to afford a home, but they've they're able now to get renting. That actually takes pressure off that lower end of the market and actually enables other people to be able to to bid and to to buy new homes. Also, we can think about zoning laws. You know, looking about at about density um, to en- enable medium and high density housing closer to the CBD, and also as well, we really should think about. Uh, taxation reform we shouldn't it shouldn't be a case of we're actually making it beneficial to in effect speculate or invest in housing it shouldn't be something that is just 
generating more wealth for people who've already got homes. So it sounds like we know what we actually need to do, we just need to get someone to do it. Thanks a lot for joining me on The Crunch, Greg. Absolutely, always a great pleasure, Nick. That's all for The Crunch today. And if you'd like to stay up to date with new episodes, you can subscribe to our newsletter using the link below. If you'd like to support what we're doing, you can share episodes on your socials or drop us a like on YouTube. Thanks.